Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here with some information that's important for people who have suffered with chronic fatigue syndrome or those of you who have experienced or continue to experience ongoing stress. We're talking today about the adrenal glands and a hormone that they produce called cortisol. And you may have been hearing a lot about this hormone because this is an anti-aging hormone, it's an anti-stress hormone. And I'll tell you that these hormones, cortisol and DHEA, both manufactured by the adrenals, are critical to everyone's health. I work with many kinds of patients who are struggling with chronic health problems, and one of the things that I have heard over the years, over and over again, is that many of these patients have been able to trace back their health problem, whether it's fibromyalgia or thyroid or some sort of autoimmune issue or fibromyalgia, to a point in their life where they experienced a great deal of stress. So here's the thing. Cortisol is an amazing, is an amazing hormone in the sense that it's life-saving. When you're under stress, it comes to your rescue and it can do just an amazing job at helping you either fight or flight from the situation that you're in. Now, here are just some of the things that cortisol does for you. One that's, that's really important for, for sustaining life is that it mobilizes carbohydrates and fat to make energy, right? So it converts the foods you eat into energy. I want you to imagine your house for just a moment and it's on fire. And in this very minute, you know, your children are upstairs, they're sleeping. And at that point in time, what's gonna happen is, is your body's gonna kick into this fight or flight mode. Your adrenals are gonna start pumping out cortisol. Your sympathetic nerve system is gonna become engaged. Your heart's gonna beat faster and pump uh, more blood through, through the, the circulatory system. Your breathing rate is going to increase so that you can take in more oxygen so you can run faster. And your, and your body's gonna convert those extra carbs that you just ate into glucose so that the muscles can be fueled and you can run upstairs and save your children and get out of a blazing house that's on fire. It's really an amazing thing, this hormone, for survival. And so some of the other things and major roles that uh, your adrenals do is it helps keep your blood sugar levels stable throughout the day, right? Remember, your brain needs fuel and fuel is oxygen and fuel is glucose. And if you deprive your body of either oxygen or glucose, you're literally starving your brain. And so you're gonna experience things like concentration issues, you're gonna have problems with focus, you're gonna have problems with memory. Maybe you're gonna become just a little bit more irritable at certain times of the day, or you're gonna be in more of an extreme state uh, where your blood sugar starts to really drop. You're gonna start to get shaky and dizzy and sweaty, and you're gonna start to pass out, okay? That's not all your adrenals can be related to. Um, they also help keep your blood sugar stable while you're sleeping, all right? For many people that suffer with adrenal problems, they typically wake up at a certain time of the night. Uh, because what's happening is, is that their adrenal glands are dropping, their blood sugar levels are dropping, and now all of a sudden, the, uh, another hormone that your body makes is called adrenaline. And so now your adrenals kick in, they make adrenaline, and now you can't fall back to sleep. All right? Now, if you notice that you're waking up feeling just as tired as you were when you went to bed, this most likely indicates an adrenal imbalance. Now, I'd also tell you that if you're waking up around 2 or 3 in the morning on a regular basis, this again could indicate a low blood sugar state due to an adrenal imbalance. The other red flag that I would uh, suggest that you be uh, mindful of is that if you find yourself fatigued, especially at 10 in the morning, at 12 p.m., at 2 p.m., or even at 4 p.m., this again could indicate a low adrenal state. So those are just a couple of the signs that you have an adrenal imbalance that you need to have your adrenals tested. So what happens when your cortisol levels remain ramped up or they remain elevated for a prolonged period of time? Well, obviously it depends on the individual, right? All kinds of symptoms and the long-term health problems that can occur down the road have been linked to anything from neurodegenerative diseases where your brain's being affected, uh, things like Alzheimer's disease, things like memory loss. We actually know that under prolonged states of stress, um, areas of gray matter can be affected that are uh, associated with memory. We know that a specific area in the brain called the hippocampus, which is involved in those short-term memory patterns, we know that those can be affected. We know that high levels of adrenal stress or prolonged stress, again, can lead to heart disease through an inflammatory process. We know that adrenals can lead to insulin resistance. We know that they can lead to weight gain. We know that they can lead to leptin resistance. And we know that they can lead to type 2 diabetes. So the next time you, know, you go and see your doctor and he or she tells you that your blood work looks normal, but you continue to experience all these signs and symptoms that we just talked about, you're gonna know better, okay? 
Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for upcoming videos in this video series that we're going to be doing. The next video I'm going to talk to you about is going to be how to test for this adrenal fatigue and just some of the causes that are behind adrenal fatigue. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.